Leading up to January of 2018, Robert Fosco was serving a 68-year sentence for a specially aggravated kidnapping at the Minimum Security Morgan County Correctional Complex in Tennessee. On January the 5th, Fosco, who was in his late 30s at the time, escaped the prison. The authorities didn't reveal the circumstances under which the incident had occurred, but Fusco would later be revealed to have played a key role in a complex contraband scheme. As reported by the Knoxville News Sentinel, Fusco was caught trying to sneak back into prison while carrying tobacco, drugs and cell phones just two days after his escape. He and his associates had reportedly planned to sell the contraband on the facility's black market. In September of 2018, Fusco was one of eight people, including two former correctional officers, indicted as being part of the contraband scheme. Among the accused was 29-year-old Megan Cheryl Jones, a former guard who'd been in an intimate relationship with Fusco and who'd also snuck cell phones for him inside the prison. 30-year-old Jarrett Tolley, Fusco's former cellmate, was accused of smuggling hacksaw blades into the facility. At the time of the indictment, he identified as a woman and lived under the name Alicia Tolley. As of subsequent updates on the matter, Fusco had pleaded not guilty to his charges. Number 7. Rebecca Leanne Prophet in early June of 2019, Tennessee woman Rebecca Leanne Prophet was scanned at a security checkpoint of the Riverbend Maximum Security Institution. Staff discovered that 29-year-old Prophet had hidden a package inside her body through her genitals. The woman was ordered to remove the package, which was wrapped in black tape, and to wait in a search room while staff examined it. The contraband item was found to contain 41 grams of cannabis, 12 strips of buprenorphine, approximately 20.8 grams of loose tobacco, and around 45.5 grams of meth. Prophet told prison officers that an anonymous source had paid her $300 to smuggle the package inside the facility by concealing it inside her body. She claimed that she hadn't been aware of what the package contained, but that she assumed it was marijuana because of the smell. The woman was charged with bringing contraband into a penal institution, and her bond was set at $10,000. Number 6. Carl Jensen on October the 15th of 2014, an English couple were arrested after conspiring to smuggle contraband inside Wormwood Scrubs Prison in Hammersmith, West London. 27-year-old Carl Jensen was caught on CCTV as he tied a fishing line to a wash bag, which was reeled up and over the wall by an inmate on the other side. The guards, however, saw the action unfold and went to the inmate's cell whereupon they searched the bag. It was found to contain five SIM cards inside a Kinder Surprise plastic container, a bottle of vodka, several USB charges, and a McDonald's Mac muffin. Prison staff also discovered a large block of cannabis resin, two large wraps of herbal cannabis, and a wrap of cocaine. Jensen and his girlfriend, 26-year-old Lisa Mary Hutchinson, were arrested near the prison. When the police searched the couple's home, they found top-up cards with the sims removed, as well as the box for a contraband smartwatch. Jensen pleaded guilty to conspiracy to supply cocaine, two counts of conspiracy to supply cannabis resin, and multiple counts of smuggling prohibited items into prison. He was jailed for two and a half years in the fall of 2015. Hutchinson was given a 12-month community order after she admitted to letting her boyfriend deal drugs from her apartment. Number 5. Frederick Johnson 30-year-old Tennessee man Frederick Johnson was arrested in December of 2018 for aggravated criminal trespass at a bus station in Memphis. The man had previous weapons offenses when he was found to be in possession of drugs, a taser, and two folding knives. Johnson, who weighed over 320 pounds on a 6-foot, 2-inch frame, was processed at the local jail. When he was searched by personnel, they felt a semi-erect object on the left side of his body, and Johnson told them it was his manhood. Staff became suspicious when they felt 
the same protrusion on the right side and again, Johnson told them it was the same part of his body. As stated in an official report, an officer concluded that while the possibility of the male member protruding in two different cardinal directions exists, the likelihood of Johnson suffering from such an ailment coupled with the object's symmetry suggested the presence of contraband. Johnson was strip searched and staff found a 24-inch machete wrapped in basketball shorts and hidden under a roll of the man's belly fat. The large blade had been so deeply tucked in the fat that a metal detector had failed to pick it up. In addition to his pre-existing charges, Johnson was also charged with a felony count of introducing contraband into a penal institution. Number 4. Roberto Carlos Mexican man Roberto Carlos was in the process of leaving a package for a relative detained at the Social Rehabilitation Center in Tijuacan a municipality in the central state of Puebla. In the summer of 2020, family visits had temporarily been banned to stop the spread of coronavirus, but inmates could still receive care packages. The one that Carlos left contained, among others, eggs, tomatoes, and jalapenos. As staff handled the products, one of the jalapenos broke, and a small bag of marijuana was discovered inside. The other eight peppers were found to have the same content. Carlos was consequently arrested and taken into the custody of Tehuacan police. Number 3. Ritesh Brambat Lawyer Ritesh Brambat, from the UK, faced a lengthy prison sentence in the fall of 2011 for conspiracy to supply contraband to two prisons. In 2009, staff at London's Pentonville prison noticed a suspicious amount of visits that Brambat was making to prisoner David Sterling. They thus arranged a surprise sniffer dog search on September the 17th. The lawyer entered the prison wearing black metal buckled slip-ons that were three sizes too big. He was reportedly caught off guard when told that all visitors would be subjected to a search as the inspection was normally done out of hours. When it was Brambat's turn to be inspected, two dogs signaled that he had been near or was in possession of a controlled substance. The lawyer didn't want to remove his shoes at first but ultimately complied. In his right shoe, staff found a package containing a mobile phone, earphones and accessories, a pair of electronic scales and a small quantity of mephedrone. A search of his left shoe produced 25 grams of skunk cannabis. Officers found a further 80 grams of the drug hidden in Brambat's pants. He'd planned on passing the contraband to Sterling, who was wearing a full-length Muslim robe, which facilitated concealment. While on bail for the conspiracy charges a few months after his arrest, Brambat continued making prison visits and planned another smuggling operation, as evidence indicated he'd put in an order for another pair of giant shoes. On one legal appointment to Winchester Prison, he was found with a banned mobile phone in his pocket. The lawyer was part of a wider smuggling operation that involved Sterling, fellow prisoner Desmond Brown, his girlfriend Danielle Porter, and 26-year-old Calvin Chance. The latter and Porter worked on the outside to obtain the items which were smuggled by Brambat and sold by the inmates on the prison's black market. All four of the lawyer's accomplices were given sentences that ranged from three to five years. Brambat admitted two conspiracies, each involving the smuggling of drugs and phones, in addition to a further charge of conveying a mobile phone into Winchester Prison. In the spring of 2012, he was jailed for six years, with a judge calling him a devious, conniving and unprincipled individual who would stop at nothing or allow no one to get in the way of your criminal ambition. Today's topic was requested by Amanda Davis 3874 and Miss Scousemouth 8259. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Jason Cheesy On August the 20th of 2017, 
Englishman Jason Cheesy visited a prisoner at HMP Northumberland and was caught on CCTV trying to pass him a bundle of drugs. While they were sitting at a table in full view of the surveillance cameras, Cheesy dropped the bundle on the floor and then struggled to pass it with his foot to the unnamed inmate. Upon reporting on the footage, the media would later quip that he was playing football with the package. When staff confronted Cheesy about his suspicious behavior, the 21-year-old became aggressive and demanded to leave the prison, which he was allowed to do. However, after staff inspected the contraband he'd passed to the inmate, they discovered that it contained 237 grams of cannabis, six buprenorphine tablets, a hundred diazepam tablets and over 100 steroids of two different types. Adjusted for the inflated prices of the prison's black market, the drugs had a combined value of over $10,000. Cheesy, who had 30 previous convictions, pleaded guilty to five offenses of conveying prohibited items into prison and was jailed for three months. Angus Taylor, mitigating, told the court that Cheesy received no financial reward for the failed smuggling attempt, which he described as the most inept drugs transaction you will ever see. Our release from a while back about when jailbreaks go wrong is lined up after number one for those of you who feel like you are only just starting to warm up. Number one, Joshua Waring. Laurie Peterson was a cast member on the hit Bravo series, The Real Housewives of Orange County. From his debut in 2006 and up until 2008, that year, Peterson left to deal with the many legal problems of her meth-addicted son, Joshua Waring. Court records indicated that around that time, Waring pleaded guilty to misdemeanor hit-and-run, battery and drug possession. He would face further drug charges in the years that followed until June the 20th of 2016 when Waring shot 35-year-old Daniel Lopez in the lower abdomen outside a home in Costa Mesa. Two other people escaped the drive-by attack that left Lopez needing medical attention. Waring was arrested after a vehicle chase with local law enforcement and would spend the next four years in jail while awaiting trial. A massive scandal ensued during his detention as Waring accused his jailers of illegally monitoring thousands of calls between him and his legal team. In October of 2019, footage from inside the jail would show Waring getting attacked by another inmate. The heavily tattooed aggressor, a reported gang member, charged Warren and slashed him with a bladed weapon. Warren fought back and even knocked his attacker down at one point before they were separated. When Peterson visited her son in jail, she was reported as horrified by the injuries he'd sustained, which included non-life-threatening cuts to his face, chest, and arms. The man was in the prison's protective custody wing at the time, and the fact that the other inmate was able to reach him was seen as a serious breach of security protocols. Warren publicly stated that he believed the guards had either set him up or purposefully allowed the attack to take place as punishment for him revealing that his calls had been illegally monitored. He filed a lawsuit against Orange County officials in federal court. In March of 2020, for the Lopez shooting case, Warren pleaded guilty to two felony counts of assault with force, likely to produce great bodily injury and a felony count of assault with a firearm, along with evading a peace officer, reckless driving and battery. He'd reached a plea deal that meant he would be released as he was credited for time served. Warren was arrested several more times for drug possession following his release. In 2022, he settled his lawsuit against Orange County officials for $595,000. Number 8. Gonzalo Lopez In March of 2005, Gonzalo Lopez and an accomplice named only as Rick carried out a violent home invasion in West Laco. Texas, as per the orders of their bosses with the La Mana drug cartel in Tamaulipas, Mexico. During the course of the break-in, the two men kidnapped the homeowner, identified as 37-year-old Jose Guadalupe Ramirez, who was in the midst of an ongoing dispute with the cartel. Later that night, Lopez murdered Ramirez and buried his remains in the woods. The following month, 
Lopez was arrested and charged with capital murder, of which he was ultimately convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. On May the 12th of 2022, the man was one of 16 inmates on board a Texas Department of Criminal Transport bus bound for a medical appointment. While still in transit, Lopez managed to break out of his cuffs and use a sharp object to stab the driver. He then led the two corrections officers off of the bus before returning to the vehicle and driving away without them. While he was on the run, Lopez was added to Texas's 10 most wanted fugitives list. Three weeks after his escape, the man broke into a family-owned ranch in Centerville and murdered its 66-year-old owner and four of his grandchildren. He then stole several firearms and fled in the victim's pickup truck. The stolen vehicle was spotted in Atascosa County later that night and a highway police chase ensued. Lopez eventually drove the vehicle into a fence, at which point he got out and opened fire on the pursuing officers. He was gunned down in the return fire. In the aftermath, the state's criminal justice department announced that it would be suspending inmate transports pending a comprehensive review of its transportation procedures. Number 7. Jessica Boomershine in early 2020, CCTV footage from the Montgomery County Jail in Ohio captured an inmate's ill-fated escape attempt. The viral clip showed 42-year-old Jessica Boomershine mount a chair in the facility's waiting area before attempting to climb up into the ceiling. Others in the room alerted nearby guards to the situation, and a few seconds later, Boomershine burst through the ceiling after it suddenly gave way. She dangled there for a moment before a corrections officer grabbed hold of her and pulled her back down. Having previously been arrested for kidnapping and assaulted an elderly Miamisburg man, Boomershine subsequently faced additional charges of escape and vandalism. In February of 2021, the woman was sentenced to between 25 and 30 years behind bars during a hearing at Montgomery County Common Pleas Court. Number 6. Santos Samuel Fonseca and Jonathan Salazar on November the 3rd of 2019, a pair of inmates at California's Monterey County Jail escaped and fled to Mexico. The county sheriff's office identified the fugitives as 21-year-old Santos Samuel Fonseca and 20-year-old Jonathan Salazar, both of whom had been locked up on pending murder charges in connection to separate cases. The young men had reportedly created a hole in the ceiling of a communal bathroom through which they gained access to a maintenance gap before kicking open a hatch that was obscured from view by construction crews working on jailhouse renovations. In the wake of their escape, Fonseca and Salazar ditched their prison jumpsuits and wore the street clothes they had on underneath as they crossed the US-Mexico border and headed for Tijuana. Federal authorities ultimately apprehended the two escapees when they returned to the border a couple of days later in an attempt to re-enter the states. They were subsequently returned to Monterey County Jail. Fonseca and Salazar reportedly belonged to rival gangs, but had formed a partnership after being housed in the same unit of the facility. Number 5. Gallia County Jail Escape In the early hours of September the 29th of 2019, four inmates at Gallia County Jail in Gallipolis, Ohio, escaped after overpowering correction officers Bryn Martin, Christopher Clemente, Troy McDaniel Jr., and Lawrence R. Lee III reportedly accosted two female guards with a shank and stole the keys to one of their vehicles, which they subsequently used to make their escape. A second vehicle was waiting for the four men about a block from the jail and was later recovered at an undisclosed location in Pennsylvania. The North Carolina Highway Patrol alerted the police in Cary that the four fugitives were believed to have made their way into the area of the Red Roof Inn on Walnut Street. Upon the arrival of law enforcement, Three of the four men were apprehended while Lee III remained at large until his eventual capture in Durham. The charges levied against the escapees in question included domestic violence, assault, menacing, drug possession, burglary, and unlawful restraint, per court records. It was reported that Martin, who possessed an extensive criminal record, had previously escaped from the same jail and had thus been charged with escape earlier in the month of September. Number 4. Walker County Jail Escape Twelve inmates at Walker County Jail in Jasper, Alabama, took advantage of an inexperienced employee to carry out a daring jailbreak in the summer of 2017. 
During a subsequent press conference, the county sheriff detailed how the prisoners had used peanut butter from jailhouse sandwiches to facilitate their plan. They reportedly changed the number over the door that accessed the outside by spreading the sticky food paste over it. A recent hire at the jail was man in the control room at the time, and when the inmates asked for that particular door to be opened, he obliged. Having been fooled by their peanut butter fueled deception, 11 of the 12 escapees were apprehended within the first 24 hours, including the most serious offenders of the group. 24-year-old Brady Andrew Kilpatrick, who'd been in custody on drug-related charges, remained on the run for about a day before he was tracked down and rearrested in southern Martin County, Florida. Number 3. Tula Jailbreak in the early morning hours of December the 1st of 2021, a gang of armed thugs launched a vehicle ramming attack on a pair of cars parked outside of a prison in the Mexican town of Tula de Allende. The gangsters proceeded to blow up the vehicles in an attempt to garner the attention of prison guards, who were then bombarded by a deluge of gunfire. Following additional explosions, the gang gained access to the detention facility and stormed inside. In the ensuing mayhem, a total of nine inmates were freed, including Jose Artemio Maldonado Mia, known as El Micocano, a local drug lord and head of the Mexican cartel known as the Pueblos Unidos. The following day, three of the escaped inmates and eight of the gangsters who took part in the violent jailbreak were taken into the custody of Mexican police. As of the latest developments, the government of Hidalgo had launched a full-scale investigation aimed at tracking down the rest of the fugitives. Number 2. Ronaldo Silva 39-year-old Ronaldo Silva walked right out of a prison in the Brazilian municipality of Penedo after dressing himself in women's clothes. The inmate, an alleged drug trafficker, had obtained the feminine disguise by way of his wife who smuggled the clothes in during a visit before leaving in her husband's Bermuda shorts. Silver's get-up successfully fooled the prison guards, who allowed the man donning a wig, makeup, high heels and a blue dress to exit the facility without incident. Less than an hour later, the escapee was spotted on the street by a police officer who took note of his awkward, unsteady gait. After he was returned to jail, Silver's wife admitted to having given him the clothes he used in his escape but indicated that she didn't know why he'd wanted her to bring them. The man had been transferred to the institution in Pinedo after a previous armed escape attempt that proved similarly fruitless. Number 1. Casey White At about 9.30 a.m. on April the 29th of 2022, Casey White, who was awaiting trial in a capital murder case, was escorted to a police cruiser by Vicky White the assistant director at the Lauderdale County Jail in Florence, Alabama. After the man got into the vehicle in handcuffs and shackles, Vicky, who had no familial relation to him, drove them away from the detention center for what she claimed was a scheduled mental health evaluation at the courthouse. Although the task of transporting inmates to such appointments would generally be performed by two deputies, the woman wasn't challenged most likely due to her prestigious position at the institution. When Vicky and White never returned to the detention center, a manhunt was launched by the Lauderdale County Sheriff's Department, but soon came to involve authorities nationwide. The ensuing investigation led to the discovery that Vicky, who was supposed to retire on the day she'd left with White, had never actually finalized the paperwork. She had sold her four-acre property for significantly less than its assessed value and purchased several items including firearms, men's clothing, and vehicles. It was subsequently determined that the assistant jail director had sparked up a romantic relationship with White, which was believed to have begun as early as two years prior to their escape. In early May of 2022, Vicky was terminated from her position and a warrant was issued for her arrest. On the 9th of the month, the police in Evansville, Indiana, obtained surveillance footage of the fugitives at a car wash, where they got into a Cadillac DTS. They were subsequently located at a Motel 41 in town. When law enforcement closed in on the couple, a high-speed car chase ensued on the highway, culminating in the Cadillac, flipping into a ditch following a pit maneuver. White surrendered without incident, while Vicky was found suffering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound, to which she ultimately succumbed at the hospital. Although a medical examiner 
officially ruled that the woman had taken her own life, White faced an additional felony murder charge in connection to her death, with his trial scheduled to begin in December of 2022. Thanks for watching. For a hundred thousand dollars, would you rather spend a year in solitary confinement or a month in an active war zone? Let us know in the comments section below.